Okay. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot the screen share. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me a great pleasure to uh, to uh, open the uh, graduation ceremony for the uh, Hang on Master a Gardener. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm having uh, technical difficulties here. Okay, now let me go back at screen share. Okay, we're getting there. Dave, can you see that all right? Yes, yes. Now we're cooking. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, uh, for the graduation ceremony of the uh, class, the Master Gardener class of, of 2020, as I say, 219, 220, 221. Um, just to remind everybody, there is a reception following the, the diploma ceremony uh, across the street at the Stryker Building. Just walk out and, and head across the street. Uh, it's 100 yards, you, you won't miss it. Um, and while I'm on the topic of reception, I would like to, uh, and they're not here, uh, well, Frank is here, thank the uh, Angela Singal who, who ran the committee to put that all together uh, and her committee members. Uh, when you see them at the reception, please, uh, again, thank them for their effort. Uh, uh, they were, were very, uh, very nice to, to spend the time uh, to do that. And they've been here since uh, eight o'clock in the morning. So um, I'd also like to welcome uh, the uh, graduating class. A lot of you I don't know, uh, and I apologize because they're been over a year since there was a class. Yeah, I know her, yeah. Um, also, I would like to welcome the guest of the graduate. I, I know graduating class. I know there are a lot of family members and friends um, who uh, are here. Please come to the reception. If somebody comes up to you, probably me says, who are you? Uh, introduce yourself. Um, but thank you all for coming and supporting your uh, future master gardener. Um, the way this was going to flow, I'm going to make a few comments, for, uh, introduce our speaker, who is Forrest uh, Hobbs, and then um, we'll have a uh, the, the ceremony. Um, I'd also like to thank, uh, and being a member of the training team previously for, for three or four years, the, the uh, training team of the training committee, uh, the chair is um, Jen Campbell. Um, I'm going to make you all stand up. Uh, you know me, and I'm sorry. Okay, uh, Pam Arnold. I know Pam's here. I saw her somewhere. Oh, Pam in the back. Okay, Wendy. I've not seen is Wendy. Where are you? Oh, Wendy. I'm sorry. Okay, stand up, Wendy, please. Uh, Pam. Pam Maglin. Oh, sneaking up on me. Cheryl Redinger. Where's Cheryl? I know she's here. Uh, you have an intern representative, which was a brilliant idea, Jill. For us, that's funny. You make it okay. And I hear there's a brand new member, a brand new member, um, a person who I call Dirty Kathy Briggs. Where's the? And if you want to know why I have that nickname, talk to me later. Yeah. So yeah, um, these are the people that work hard to, to graduate the class. I'm looking for my cheat sheet that Jen sent me. Just had, here it is, very good. I'm gonna talk briefly and embarrass some of the people in the class. Um, again, these were interns, these weren't full master gardeners, but the class has logged over 2,700 volunteer hours, okay? This class, okay? <laughs> There's a list of this, please hold your applause, okay? Over half of the class has 100 hours per volunteer, okay? You remember there's a 50 hour minimum, but, but half the class has exceeded that. One in turn has over 300 hours. Talk about, where's Jeff? Is Jeff here? Yeah, yeah. talk about overachiever, yeah. Very good. Um, 
nominations committee. Think about Jeff here next year. Um, they, the class has written articles for Facebook, for the newsletter. They participated in field trips. Um, they participated in the pruning videos. Uh, I know I don't see Kim. Is Kim here? I see uh, get, uh, Kim. Kim was the, the movie star for the, um, for the uh, pruning video. Also, Kim is working with the plant sale. I think she's co-chair. She may not know that, but she is now, yeah, yeah. Uh, large number of this intern class came to our board meetings, okay, to see how the, the system works. Um, my only apology is I was running the board meeting, so it probably wasn't the most efficient. So uh, they served on committees. Um, they sat at the master gardener desk at the state fair. In fact, I was there with Herman. Is Herman here? Yeah, there he is. Okay. He and I had a grand time there, so yeah. Never did get my turkey leg. Never did get it, yeah. $15 is a little pricey for this cowboy, so yeah. Uh, they spoke uh, at the Williamsburg uh, Botanical Garden. Dean shows that, because Dean, yep, there you are. I haven't seen you in a long time. Um, and then Don Fittigan is going to be our new secretary on the board of directors. So this class has done a lot. Uh, this class has done a lot, and they haven't even started yet. So. Uh, well done, people. I salute each and every one of you very much. Yeah. You all are tired of hearing me babble on. So let me do my last thing is I'm going to introduce our guest speaker. About three or four years ago, uh, when I was with the training uh, class, the committee decided it'd be nice to have a speaker, not necessarily to talk on gardening. Okay, we've had the... Uh, the administrator of James City County. We've had Colonial Williamsburg, uh, people of, of uh, non-profs to speak. So we're continuing that tradition. Um, and uh, the, the con current committee uh, thought it would be very appropriate to have our new uh, assistant extension, extension agent, uh, ANR Agriculture, um, be the guest speaker. Forrest is originally from Wise County, Virginia. Um, you head west and you go, uh, you can hit Wise County. Um, has a BS in agriculture, General uh, Berea College, which is in Kentucky. I did not know that. A master's from Virginia Tech. Um, 12 years was a VCE agent in, in Brunswick, Goochland, and Powhatan counties. Okay, so he has a lot of experience under his belt. Uh, he was a school teacher for 20 years as a vocational agriculture instructor, Hanover, Carolina, and Chesterfield counties. Um, and July, so just a few months ago, he became the extensive agent. And I say, I'm, I, we always call him our agent um, uh, at James City County in a shared position with New Kent County. Okay? As I mentioned before, Forrest is a pure pleasure to work with, um, a wonderful man. Uh, where did he go? Oh, he's hiding back there. Okay. <laughs> if he left, he wasn't going to be wonderful anymore. Yeah. So, Forrest, please. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. There's a couple of things that come to mind uh, when I get up here to do this. Number one, I'm not the best uh, experienced uh, speaker on such matters as this. So, I'm going to do what I can and do the best. Number one question I ask myself what would Marty do? <laughs> okay um, second question is am I being recorded I better watch what I say in my jokes okay <laughs> third thing is who is that Nordic god of her Dave Banks he's got this aurora borealis and I look at him and I say wow and he, he has the power to touch one button and make things happen and don't on that note everyone in here is extremely talented with what they do uh Talents that I, we're barely scratching the surface of what I know and how you do and what things. And on that note, there's a new set of volunteers coming on. And it's just an amazing thing to be up here and, and be part of the thank you for this. Let's not forget this while I go through these. And I'm going to approach what I have to say about volunteerism from what I can find within Extension. Uh, the interface between Extension and volunteers looked around things in Virginia, and there's great big, huge notebooks, not a 10-minute not a thing. 
anywhere to be found on basic outlines on what to do, or what's next. Now, how do I forward this? I kept this oh, thing here. You're with me. Okay. So, um, so I look around and I went to uh, Ohio State, extensions around the world now. Some of the things that are going on with extension have gone international. Uh, went up to the Saunders. The Saunders were part of the International Master Garter thing. Virginia is leading the way and James City County is leading the way in a lot of the, the things that are happening within an extension. So we have a lot to be proud of in James City County and Williamsburg. So I am so glad you're doing this because I get lost. <laughs> <laughs> I have to find it because we had that intervening PowerPoint. Uh, do you have your... Uh, yes, I do. Let me just okay. plug it back in. Right. Yep. It exceeded my technical okay. skills. Um, but with that, there's a lot of terms where I grew up. I grew up in uh, Wise County, Virginia, the coal mines. Uh, there's eight state capitals closer than Virginia state capital to where I grew up. Uh, went west to go to college, uh, went to a little place, a liberal arts college called Berea College. Uh, did a whole lot of things that were unusual. So a place where you is a work study where you have to work and do things at, at, while you go to school. And part of my upbringing, I'm gonna go ahead and tell a story early on this. Uh, part of my volunteering was at one moment, my freshman year is carrying Grandpa Jones's banjo case in. He was an old man. There was a banjo thing going on. I thought, well, he's one of my heroes. So in my culture, I grew up listening uh, to a lot of Ralph Stanley and when Ricky Skaggs was on a fiddle with Ricky Skaggs, I would, pull up to Maggard Sound Studio and see what's going on when he was 14, 15 years old. My culture is very different. On that note, carried Grandpa Jones's banjo case in, and it led to him sticking around, hanging out with me. I think I skipped a class that day because Grandpa Jones was there. Um, he went to this, uh, this dance group, country folk dance thing uh, that afternoon. He invited the whole group to the Grand Ole Opry. Or did that? Can you okay, and I do have a very unusual accent, so I do apologize to do my best. Okay, uh, on that note, got paid two summers to travel to Europe for the dance group. Okay, so you never know what small amount of volunteerism makes other things happen. That right there is something that, like, you don't know what kind of volunteerism, what little bitty item will shape up things. So volunteer management from an extension standpoint. Okay, this is something that came from this Ohio State nonprofits that manage and engage volunteers well are more cost efficient, as well as significantly better led, better managed and more adaptable to exigent changes. Now I'm a country person. I didn't know what exigent change is. What is exigent? What does that word mean? So I Googled it and it gave the analogy if you're on a train track and you have a train coming towards you, it is not a good time to sit back and write a poem. Okay. <laughs> and I sit there and I thought about that. You guys have been the perfect analogy of exigent change with this uh, virus for this two years. So, and you have adapted very well with this. As a volunteer group, it's just amazing. A lot of the groups that I go and talk to, they are so excited to start start their uh, master garner things and the sign up, they're at struggling. I don't have that struggle here. I don't, I don't see it. I don't say, what are you talking about? Ours are just amazing. Okay, this is where this talk came from and has been abbreviated. This was out in Ohio State. And a lot of the talks and things that have happened for the past year are somewhere online. So I'm kind of adapting. If it's out there, I might find it. So this is where this came from. Okay, what do we know as far as the interface between extension and volunteers? There's a need for assistance to achieve the cooperative extension mission. There's a tremendous need uh, with all the shortfalls that we have with extension, there's a, just more than ever. And VCE turns to volunteers to fulfill this role for achieving this mission. Okay, the mission had to define that point well, is to enable people to improve their lives through an educational process that uses scientific knowledge focused on issues and needs. Most of you people know this, you understand this. 
Now, here are some of the myths within extension about volunteers coming from an extension standpoint that was discussed at this conference, okay? Volunteers are free. No, volunteers are not free, okay? Uh, volunteers volunteer for a reason. Things that make volunteers tick is very important. Trying to understand uh, what is important each, you know, volunteers are not free from an administrative standpoint, from a Virginia Tech, from the top all the way down to the locality, volunteers, it's not a free situation, you know? Uh, the second one, you can't invest in volunteer efforts. Uh, that is also not true. You can invest in volunteer efforts. You know, you can have supplies, materials. Uh, this is a very, very advanced master gardener group. Most master gardener groups get a whole lot more help than you guys are getting here, okay? All the way around, whether it's materials, help, assistance, that sort of thing. Okay, the third thing, volunteers want only what you want. That's not true. My priorities are very different sometimes and each individual priority. Uh, on that note, I was just thinking Marty was the greatest person, wonderful. Then about a month ago, I heard he was a dentist. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. I say, well, maybe all dentists aren't in that category, but we're good, okay? So anyway, <laughs> okay. Uh, meeting volunteers halfway is a recipe for trouble. Uh, there's a lot of professionals that are in this category where what is halfway? Well, everything about life is at least halfway, you know? Life is a bunch of compromise. And, and the sooner people understand that, that's true. But as a volunteer, you need to see what's going on. And I'm trying to explain the interface between extension and volunteers best I can. Okay, here's the last rumor and myth. Okay, volunteer work is best defined as the stuff, okay, that you don't want any part of. There's a world of things that master gardeners are doing. And I would just love to be down here right in the thick of it. You know, uh, just almost every topic that's out there that you guys have discussed is like, man, I sure hope I don't miss that. Uh, it's just amazing uh, what happens. And this is really not true. Volunteer work is not to be in the category of things that are left over that you don't want to do. Okay, 12 good practices for VCE to retain volunteers. Be prepared. Uh, I think Bill was talking about me having a set of notes to look at. Uh, that's great. That's standard issue. If you're going somewhere, don't count on a technology to work most of the time. <laughs> that happens. Also, uh, got home about 10 o'clock last night after a pesticide thing where we were training farmers in Hanover. Uh, this is where about three agents get together and they train the latest. It's a three hour training for farmers uh, to get a special licensure to make sure that everything is protected. So you have to get ready for this sort of thing. Okay, manage conflict, don't avoid it. If you start ignoring a conflict, it gets worse and worse and worse. It's, uh, it, that's just the nature of things. Okay, say thank you often. And I tend not to say thank you enough. It, you know, it's really just amazing what happens when, when the courtesy of just a simple thank you happens. Okay, practice active listening. This is something that you gain when you get older. Instead of speaking your mind and getting in trouble, sit back, listen to it. Half the time, things will situate and take care of themselves. The other half, uh, you can think about it. Practice the listening. Practice listening skills. Okay. Understand that the volunteer organization is not, uh, okay, understand that the volunteer organization is not the volunteer's number one priority in life. Uh, there are probably so many different priorities in this room, okay? And volunteerism in and of itself is a situation where people vote with their feet, okay? Volunteers basically vote with their feet. There's another presentation on that somewhere, but it's, it's a good one. Okay, now, okay, pick up the phone. Uh, don't be afraid. And I, my main means of communication sometimes when I'm, a uh, little concern about a recorder being on is the phone, okay? And there's an issue. Uh, really haven't had to make that many phone calls and stuff. Uh, ask for feedback. What do you think about this? What's going on with this? I don't understand this. Uh, okay, implement the best of it. 
This is my situation where I was getting ready to talk about implement the best of it, where I've been known in my youth to, to uh, and take this as part of, take the best of it. I, I could cut a rug and drain a jug, okay? That's a country saying from Kentucky. Now I'm telling you about the best part of it with the Grandpa Jones article on where he saw me dance with his banjo and say, you guys are coming to the Grand Ole Opry, okay? So I didn't know I had a skill until it's recognized. Sometimes it's in that category. So take the best of it, okay? Uh, the other part as far as how to make alcohol and moonshine, that's something that the rest of the state's trying to figure out with the wineries and stuff at this point. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, learn what makes each volunteer tick. For example, Rick is uh, in the trees. Uh, I have a tremendous fascination with the Osage Orange, the wood. There's a new Smithsonian art uh, on Osage Oranges. There's an old one too that they had to do a redaction from. So it's just amazing what, uh, what's out there, what people are concerned and interested in. And it's gonna take some time to number one, learn names. Number two, what takes and makes people tick. Each individual is just different in what they're into. And I get it, I totally understand that. Providing ongoing support. Uh, I'm doing what I can to help out. If I don't know there's a need, then we've got a problem. Uh, I need to know what there's, what it is. And the last thing, the number 12 is practice the platinum rule. I had to look this one up too. I've heard of the golden rule. What is the platinum rule? Has anybody heard of this before? Okay, let's move on. I had to define that one too. The platinum rule, treat others the way they want to be treated. Okay. It recognize that it's not about what you want to give, it's about what others want to receive. Any questions with this? Now, hang on here. I don't like presentations that are on the thumb drive, so there's something else that I was supposed to say here at the end. Oh, okay. This is a part that's not on the thumb drive. Uh, my, my wife, we read a lot of Smithsonian, sit on the deck and talk about things. And we had company to visit and we we're talking about the Smithsonian article on all the different types of lightning bugs. And it was a really good article. Has anybody seen or heard of this article? Yeah, so many different types and species. And I was sitting there listening and they were, she started talking about what they ate and things, you know, when they're young and why they live in moist areas where they eat slugs and, and uh, earthworms and things, you know, you have to have a moist area to have a lot of lightning bugs. And we got in the conversation about the differences in how they signal each other, okay? And the Morse code type things that happen and all that. And I talked about how we depleted our world of lightning bugs when 4-H was buying lightning bugs for some studies in the University of Tennessee. It was a 4-H fundraiser. Worked great until my mom decided we couldn't use a freezer anymore to store them in, so. <laughs> but. A lot of that, you know, we were talking about these, just so many different types of lightning bugs. And there was somebody in the crowd from another country and, and broken in and said, no, I think you're wrong. And this was after about 30 minutes of discussion. Everybody's sitting around on a deck looking at the lightning bug. He said, what do you mean? He said, there's only two types. And this equates to volunteers too. You can have so, depends on how you look at it. So many different types of lightning bugs. But in his definition, you have two types, on and off. <laughs> <laughs> so you can look at volunteers from that standpoint how are they defined you can define them as different species different types or you can look at volunteers from a standpoint of are they on or are they off so that's pretty much what i have to say i couldn't quite work that last part into the presentation but thank you so much for what you do and, and the effort. With that, I am going to turn the, uh, the stage over to, to Jen, Forrest, and Pam. Uh, also, I think I, we've hired professional photographers for today. Uh, we're paying them a lot of money. Um, Kay, where, where'd the ugly one go? <laughs> there he is. Elvin and Kay are going to be taking photographs. Thank you all for doing that. <laughs>
Hey, Jen, yeah. if you get over here, we can actually show this to people at home. If you come over this way. Yeah. Pam will be up there. Yeah. Okay. How's that? Oh. I, I got. I got to really say this was such a great, great, great. I mean, the hardships they endured, as well as you guys. You remember when COVID hit? We couldn't even have the last couple of classes. We had to cancel the classes, and they had to take them online. And then all the projects were shut down. So they didn't have any way to get their volunteer hours. And then slowly the projects came back on and they were the first one raising their head. They're always, always asking us, you know, hey, what's up? What can I get? Where can I work? I want to do this. And like Marty read to you, I mean, just a phenomenal amount of work that they did. They, they, they did work in areas we never touched before. So I really just can't say enough about this class, how resilient they are, and just just wonderful, wonderful bunch of folks because they were patient, they were eager. You know, it was all the best. So, um, without further ado, I know you guys can wait for this. We're almost through here. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to call out your name. Please come up to the stage and receive your certificate. Jim Eckridge. Dennis Brandon. Jill Burris. Jim did a wonderful job for us as an interim representative on the training team. She gave us all the feedback that her, her peers were handing to her, and she's staying on for another year. So we have to now. Bob Burris. Dolores Good. Linda is the silent partner behind the 
the newsletter. Her daughter is the uh, uh, editor. So. <laughs> Newport News has his own landscaping company there, landscaping company. Is it? Yeah. Is it? Carol Mayfield, Jeff Mellinger. Okay, here's Dean Shoshan. Edwin Velez Rivera. Edwin started working at the volunteer at the Williamsburg Botanical Garden before he even started the class. That's how he just <laughs> And we have a few that were not able to um, come today. Sue Barton, Carol Beers, Diana Hardy, Kay Hines, Carol Mayfield, and Drew Morgan. Thank you. Reception. Uh, class mates, I would ask you that as we go over to the side of the building, you want to get a group photo of all of that. So, uh, our photographer will be okay. in the spot. Okay, hold it before we go. Do I hear a motion to adjourn uh, today's meeting? Mary Grogan, motion. Luann seconds it. All in favor, show of hands, please. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much.
Thanks everybody for coming. Hey Rick, Rick, who who seconded that? It was Leanne who.